Now, yet another interesting input. We'll see later why it is interesting. A sinusoid. Okay. And actually, I could have a arbitrary phase shift here. So, Vp cos omega t plus phi. Okay. And then again, I find Vc, but of course, I could find any other variable in the circuit also, right. I will always use this very simple circuit as an example because I do not want the algebra to overwhelm what I am trying to convey here, but uh, this procedure can be used for other things also. Similarly, for that exponential, right. And for a first order circuit, as long as you know that, uh, let us say we had exponential ST as excitation and the actual circuit was very complicated. You still know that the steady state response is exponential ST times something and then the natural response or the transient response is exponential minus T by the time constant of the circuit and by manipulating the constants with initial conditions and so on, you will be able to get the answer, okay. So, now in this case, what do you think is the solution to this? Again, I want Vc of T, right. Vc of t, it will possibly have multiple parts. What do you think it will consist of? First of all, it will have the natural response, okay. And then force response. What is the force response going to be? It can be anything because, I mean, if you differentiate cos, you get sine, and if you differentiate sine, you get cos, okay. If you think of this as sort of balancing act, where if you have cos omega t plus phi on this side, you should have it on that side so that it cancels, okay. But then Vc cannot be just cos omega t plus phi because when you differentiate it, you get sine. So, you expect that the general form of it there are many ways of writing this. I could put some other angle theta there and then try to cancel it also. Okay alpha cos omega t plus phi plus beta sin omega t plus phi. I will write it in this form. So, clearly if I differentiate this, I will get ok. So, now you can put this in there, put this in there and you have two constants right alpha and beta. So, you have to balance the sine and you have to balance the cosine. So, from that you can get these two constants ok. You can never balance a sine with a cosine right that is not possible. So, you have to take the cos terms out and the sine terms out and then you can get the stuff. Of course, this will give you only the forced response. The general stuff will have also the, the natural response ok. Please derive the complete response including the natural response. I will have a separate lesson in which I will show the derivation you can compare your answers to mine. So, this is one way of doing it. Can you think of any other way of doing it? I mean knowing what we know so far. Another thing you can do is this uh, V p cos omega d plus phi is V p by 2 exponential j omega t plus phi, I mean the whole thing is multiplying this ok. So, we already know the solution to exponential S t ok. So, this is nothing but again I have another phi here, what do I do? This is exponential j phi exponential j omega t ok. So, that is just another multiplying factor. So, I know uh, the solution to V p exponential s t ok. So, all I have to do is substitute s with this j omega and then that V p with this V p by 2 times exponential j phi ok. The constants I have to adjust is not it that is all there is some other constant here. So, I do it for uh, this one and I do it for that one and I can add up the results to get the force response. Please derive the complete response including the natural response. 
I will have a separate lesson in which I will show the derivation. You can compare your answers to mine. Is this okay? So, there are two ways of doing this. First, you know that if you have a sinusoid, the solution is always some linear combination of sin and cos. Okay, alpha cos plus beta sin. You can always take it as the solution. And then you plug it into the differential equation and find the constants. You will get two equations, one from balancing the sine and other from balancing the cosine. Okay. Alternatively, you can express the sinusoid as combination of complex exponentials. A very, very useful concept. Actually, there is no life as electrical engineer without complex exponentials or without complex algebra. Okay. We will move to that. So, you now uh, have exponentials that is easier. Okay, you know that the steady state response to an exponential is only that exponential, okay, with some scaling. So, you do it for uh, exponential plus j omega t, exponential minus j omega t and then add up the results. Okay, by the way, one thing I did not uh, emphasize earlier is that we always have the steady state response and the natural response and we know that linear uh, circuits obey superposition, but in this case we have to be a little careful. The steady state response follows superposition by itself, that is if you have an input x, you find the steady state response, input y, some other steady state response. The steady state responses will superpose. Okay, If you have alpha x plus beta y, this will be alpha times the first solution plus beta times the second solution. Okay, The natural response also scales with the initial condition. Okay, But what you cannot do is for some initial condition, you apply one input, find the total response for the with the other input alone, find the total response. If you add up, you will get the wrong result. Okay, So, the steady state response itself follows superposition and the natural response itself by itself scales with the initial condition. Okay, so You try it out and see. So, let us say this steps to 5 volts at t equal to 0 and then uh, this also is a 2 milliamp step at the same time at t equal to 0. Okay. Okay, so maybe you would take this to be 1 kilo ohm and 1 nanofarad. The particular things do not matter. So, now first you find the total response taking everything together by taking the feminine equivalent, etc. Then you try to do the superposition. Take the total response with this 5 volt source alone, total response with this 2 milliamp source alone, and then add the two and see if you get the same result as the actual total response or not. Or if not, what exactly is wrong with it? Okay. So, the exercise is to try superposing the total response from the two sources when you have some given initial condition on the capacitor. Okay, And you assume that you have some VC of 0 on the capacitor. Okay.